Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta. How are you? Um, the weather is finally nice and sunny. I'm looking forward to some warmer weather. And that warmer weather has got me thinking about more warmer weather knits, which I'll be talking about later on. Today I am wearing my June tank top. This is a pattern by Petite Knits. It, I knit it in some silk and linen blend by Magpie Fibers, which is turning out to be um, a new favorite. It's really, really lovely. Um, but I have some things to share with you today. A few finished things, a few things I'm working on. And then I really want to talk to you about the Gathering Threads Festival that happened here in Edmonton last weekend for me, uh, May 5th to 7th. Um, so I'll tell you uh, a few of the fun things that I saw and did and uh, some of the things I got. So let's get into it. I have um, just a few finished objects, which um, I'll just kind of blaze through. <laughs> In the uh, ongoing saga of my favorite blanket, this is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, and every month she's coming out with a new section of the pattern. I'm using some speckled yarns and some variegated yarns. My street's getting cleaned. Uh, from my stash that were just languishing, not being used. So I've pulled them out and they're coming together in a lovely blanket. So this uh, most recent section has got some lovely eyelet detailing, which um, brought some interest to, to the blanket. And um, this is the fifth section. So in this section, um, we started out in a tiny triangle. This is getting harder and harder to show. And then increased on each side. Uh, till this most recent section when we started decreasing on one side and continuing to increase on the other. So now this is becoming more of a rectangle and it's got some eyelets in the middle to keep the knitting interesting and that is my most recent section of my favorite blanket. I finished a couple of sock tubes that turned into socks. These are my May socks and um, forgot to grab something I will grab it in a minute um these I had two pairs of socks in my sock bag for um sock tubes for me and I finished them this pair is I can't even remember the yarn it's just a tube that I happen to have lying around I used some she sheepies metropolis in the Warsaw colorway um to finish them up and they are uh, fraternal twins you can see that they don't match up but that doesn't bother me when it comes to socks so that's one pair off the needles, as it were. And then another pair. I find that turning sock tubes into socks is so quick. I can have it done in a couple days without really doing a ton of work on them. So that's fun. This is some yarn called um, Mind the Gap by a uh, dyer called Trailing Clouds. The, the um, colorway is based on the colors of the London Underground. The London Underground has different lines and they're called different colors. So there's the, the blue line, the pink line, the yellow line, the black line. Um, and so I turned this tube into a pair of fraternal twins. Again, this time I used some West Yorkshire spinners in the milk bottle colorway. I popped in some afterthought heels. And that's another pair of socks off the needles. So those are the things that I have finished in the last couple of weeks. I have been working on a couple things here and there. Um, my second <laughs> June tank top, I liked it so much the first time I thought I'd do it again. <laughs> it's coming along nicely. I am using some Kelborn Woolens Mojave, which again is a cotton and linen blend this time. My first one was silk and linen. This is a yarn I have used um, Several times in the past, I have made a couple of outline tanks and an outline tee out of this yarn, and I really like it. So I got another color. Sorry if you can hear my dog chewing on a stick. It is keeping him occupied while I talk to you. So I hope you don't mind. Um, and I have made some um, progress. This is just plain stockinette. It's been good knitting uh, for some volleyball games. It was good knitting for some hockey games. Uh, it is NHL playoff time, and the Edmonton Oilers are currently playing the Vegas Golden Knights. We are down 2-1. There's a hockey game tonight, uh, another one in a couple days, so there'll be more stressful hockey knitting. 
Um, so that's another June tank top. Again, it's a pattern by Petite Knits. And any of the patterns that I talk about or the yarns that I talk about will be linked in the show notes below. So if you're wondering um, how to find the patterns or how to find the yarn that I'm using, you can go ahead and look below uh, and I'll have links to all these things. Um, the other pattern I have been working on is the Marseille sweater. Um, this is a striped sweater, again by Petite Knits. I do seem to go on kicks with designers. Petite Knits um, has a style that I really, really like. Very classic um, shapes and designs. So this is uh, the Marseille sweater. This is a sweater that starts um, at the top. You knit um, short rows here. You can kind of see my little short rows because they haven't been blocked yet. On the shoulders. Um, so you do the back side first, short rows, work down to the armpit, and then the front, you do some short rows, short rows, join it across, and then down to the armpit, and then knit the whole sweater. Uh, here's, here is the armpit. And then knit the whole sweater straight down with four inches of one by one ribbing. That is a commitment. Um, I have had this sweater in my queue for a number of years, so I was willing to do it, but let me tell you, it was a bit of a, a bit of a slog. Um, the bind off for the ribbing is an Italian sewn bind off. And I think that I have a tutorial on how to do this. If I do, I'm going to link it in the show notes below. It's one of my favorite bind offs and I'll show you why. Um, it is very much like a tubular bind off. In fact, it is a kind of tubular bind off. It is sewn, so you use a really long length of the yarn that you're working with to seam it. Um, but instead of having to put all of your knit stitches on one needle and all of your purl stitches on another needle and then essentially kitchener them together, which is what a tubular bind off is, in this case, you just leave all of the stitches on the needle and then sew them off in a particular order and you get the same effect. So it's a very clean edge. The knit stitches and the purl stitches do not seem to end. They just seem to roll over the edge and it is quite stretchy. So you can see I've got some good stretch. So I'm really happy with that one. It's called an Italian tubular bind off and I will include a link in the show notes below for this particular technique because I think it's a, it is a technique worth trying. Um, it can be a little fussy, it takes some time, but I think that in the end it's worth it. And I do think that sometimes, um, I don't know about you, but it's really easy to get stuck in a rut for me using the same techniques, the same cast-ons or the same bind-offs. And so sometimes it's good to have a reason to try something new. So this might be your reason to try something new. The Italian sewn bind-off works really well for knit one, purl one ribbing, but it can be done for knit two, purl two as well. And that's what the edging looks like. So just yesterday, I picked up the stitches around the neckline. Oh, let me show you the front. That might be more helpful. There it is. Um, and I'm really quite proud of the job I did picking up the stitches. I think I did quite a nice job and I got a really clean edge. The way that this um, collar works is that you knit uh, a bunch of knit one, purl one ribbing, and then it gets folded over. So um, pretty soon I'm gonna purl one round, which provides a ridge and allows the uh, knitting to fold over itself. And then at the end, I will be picking up some stitches along here where I picked up, uh, originally picked up the ribbing for the collar and I will, knitting, I will knit those together with the stitches that I'm currently working and that will fold the collar over and secure it in place. And then, there's just a couple of sleeves. Ta -da! I have I have had this sweater on in my queue for quite some time, and it's really really lovely to see it coming together the way I hoped it would. So I am using some Sandiscarn Double Sunday. Let me just the bag's too far away. Uh, Double Sunday uh, in two colors: whipped cream, which is this creamy color and um, Sailor in the Dark, which is a really deep navy color. 
So I am very much looking forward to moving on with the sleeves and seeing how they look. I think this will be a really, really cozy sweater. I'm all about horizontal stripes. Uh, they play a very large role in my wardrobe. <laughs> um, so yeah, looking forward to having this done. And that is uh, not everything I've been working on. <laughs> I am... Um, at the Gathering Threads Festival, which I will be talking more about soon, I had signed up to take a Granny Square class with a friend of mine. Unfortunately, the person who was supposed to teach that class was unable to attend. And uh, so the class was moved to another time and I couldn't make that time. So I came home, um, I had all the materials that I needed and I thought, well, I'll just see if there's a decent video on YouTube. And of course there was, YouTube is fabulous for learning new techniques. Um, and so I will try and link a, I will try and link the video below that I used to learn how to crochet granny squares. Now I have some crochet experience and I have done um, crochet granny stripes. So this whole idea of the granny business um, was not new to me, but um, I started crocheting some squares. I haven't blocked these yet. Um, and I, I just kept going. <laughs> and going and going. And so I have now crocheted um, 25 squares. <laughs> these are all, um, these are all four rounds of the granny, um, the granny, what do you call that? Four rounds? A four round granny square. Um, and I still have some yarn left, so I'm just gonna keep going. I'm trying to mix up the colors so they're all different um, and different combinations, but now I have 25 of them and um, I don't see an end in sight. I think I'm just going to keep making granny squares until I run out of all of my yarn, the current yarns that I have. I'm using some uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. I wanted some colorful yarn that I wasn't going to um, have to spend a lot of money on, to be honest, because I wasn't sure what I be doing with these granny squares or if I would even enjoy making them. So I didn't want to make a huge investment, um, but now that I'm making them, I'm really enjoying them and I don't know what to do with them. I have some thoughts. I won't, I don't think, I won't have enough to make a blanket. I could make a cushion cover, I suppose, uh, but I do have some thoughts. What do you do with your crocheted granny squares? Um, I was thinking, I would like to block them. They're they're not blocked yet, so they're still a little, um, they're not quite the size that they would be once they're blocked, so I will be doing that. Um, and then I would like to learn how to do crochet join as you go, which is another um, technique that I've seen other podcasters doing, where you would um, essentially do another round on your, uh, like a finishing uh, round or um, sort of a, an outline color. So I would do that around all of them and then join them up. So I would like to do that. And I am toying with the idea of making a sweater. Uh, thoughts on a postcard. Let me know. Let me know what you do with your crochet granny squares. And also let me know if you have some fabulous patterns that you think would be fun. Uh, the thing with crochet is it's a little bit more not forgiving, but I think that you can sort of crochet as you go and, and it's a little bit more um, spontaneous, if you will. Like you can you can sort of figure things out as you're going. So I have I do have some um, ideas about patterns I, that I like the look of. There are obviously some crochet uh, like cardigans uh, and maybe I'll just pop, pop some pictures of patterns that I've been enjoying here. There's some bags. Here's one in particular that I was interested in. The only problem with a crochet bag is I would have to line it, uh, which isn't a huge problem. It's just another step. Um, and I do have th some thoughts about maybe turning them into um, a crochet squares on the front and the back and then knitting a neckline sleeves and a ribbed band. What do you think? What would you do if you were me <laughs> and had a plethora of crochet granny squares on your hands? Um, yeah, let me know. I would love to know. This this crochet granny square thing is still quite new to me. I'm not I'm not um, 
very experienced with them and I'm also not done making them. So there's going to be more, um, more than 25. And uh, I will be needing another color again to do an outline and then to, to put it together. So I will be ordering some more Wool of the Andes, I think, just to get a cohesive piece. And I am kind of thinking that depending on how many pieces I have, it could be a sweater that I'm looking at. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's all I've been working on, which I think is still enough. <laughs> but I'd like to share with you some of the things and um, the experiences I had at the Gathering Threads Festival this year. So um, the Gathering Thre Fe Threads Festival <laughs> is relatively new. It is a rebrand of a previous event, which was called the Edmonton Fiber Frolic, which happened in the spring and the fall. It's my understanding that the Gathering Threads Festival will be an annual event. So it took place at the beginning of May at the Edmonton Expo Center. There was um, a number of events going on. They had um, on Friday, a fashion show and some VIP shopping. Now, if uh, you wanted, you could sign up for a VIP pass, which gave you um, access to Friday night, Saturday and Sunday shopping at the um, marketplace. There was a um, fashion show on Friday evening, which you could attend. And then there was a maker's night on Saturday that you could also attend all with this VIP pass. VIP also gave you a discount on classes and also there's a VIP bag, which I saw purchased. So the VIP bag um, had a number of lovely, lovely things in it. And I'm gonna show you the things that are still here. You will not see the chocolate because I totally ate that. There was, <laughs> there was some extra um, coupons and stuff that I won't show you either because they were specific to the event. But I got this lovely bag this is a bag um, by Furls um, Fiber Arts. And Furls were uh, one of the vendors at the event and they were selling some really beautiful um, crochet hooks, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So I got this lovely bag uh, as part of the VIP um, swag. And it was filled with some lovely goodies. There was um, from Reimagined Fibers, which is a local um, vendor of um, fabric off cuts and small amounts of fabric. So if you had, let's say your grandmother's fabric stash that she was no longer using, you could take it to um, Reimagined Fibers. They clean it, they sort it, and then they sell it. So they had some cute little kits. Here's one um, in the bag and you can make a little heart, like a little stuffed heart that you could put on a bag or, um, or I think a wristlet. There is included the stuffing, the hearts, a little elastic. I believe there's some thread in here and possibly a needle. So everything you need to make a little heart stuffy from Reimagined Fibers. Um, Ancient Arts uh, is a dyer out of Calgary and they came and had an, a lovely contribution to the VIP bag where you could make a, a little mug cozy. There are There is a pattern and there are two little skeins of yarn. The yarn is the Lasco Fine. I've actually used this yarn um, to make my, um, what was the name of that sweater? I'll pop a picture here and I will put the name of it here. Um, I recently finished this sweater and I wish I could remember the name of it. Anyway, um, a little pattern and two little balls of yarn to make um, a lovely little, mug holder and I do have several of these and I love them because I use them all the time and this is one that uses mosaic stitch so I look forward to working that up. Um, there is a little mini from Numana Yarns. Numana is a local to me dyer in this lovely sort of berry color. This color is called oh Gathering Threads Contest Yarn. So they were actually um, they had a contest to name this yarn. So this is a small sampler of it and it came with some pineapple grove soak, which I have not used this flavor before, but I am looking forward to soaking some of my lovely woolens in it. This uh, mini is a sock yarn. It is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And it is 40 grams, which seems like a lot for a little mini. Hmm. Um, so that is that. And then I also got another small skein of yarn from That Yarn Habit. Um, that Yarn Habit is um, 
another dyer from Alberta. And this color is called Tanse. Tanse is a word in a Cree language and it means hello or welcome, uh, which I thought was a really lovely, uh, really lovely name for some yarn and for a local event here in Edmonton. This is a fingering weight yarn. It is again, 80-20, so 80% merino, 20% nylon. And this skein is 55 grams. So I could easily make a pair of socks for myself, especially if I used some, um, an alternate color for heels, cuffs, and toes. So that is a lovely yarn and I look forward to using that. It's also super summery. And uh, finally from Furls, um, I got a small um, needle case. Now this is a little wooden case that you could put your darning needles into. It's really, really lovely craftsmanship. So that's wooden. And then I also got one of their streamlined crochet hooks. I'll give you a peek at it just so that you can get a sense of how wonderful their crochet hooks are. Uh, this is the one that I got. It is a six and a half millimeter or a size K crochet hook. These ones are made out of resin. Um, and it's, it's, they're really lovely to hold, especially the shape of them. It makes, uh, it makes for a really nice crochet experience. And I can say that because I've been using one of their crochet hooks to make all of those squares. So that was the VIP bag. And not only did I get this, but um, as a VIP, if you went to the Furls um, booth, they were giving away a year subscription to uh, a crochet magazine online. You also got another bag, which is over there and I will show you in a minute, and another crochet hook. So this is the second Furls crochet hook that I got. This one is a size H or five millimeter and it's just the perfect size for my worsted weight yarn to make cro um, the crochet granny squares. And it's just beautiful. So I've really been enjoying using this. Um, so that was all the VIP fabulousness. So on Friday night, um, there was some special uh, VIP shopping time. The marketplace wasn't open until Saturday, but on Friday night, um, there were some, some of the vendors, not all the vendors, but some of the vendors were available for shopping. Um, and it was a great time to have um, chats with these vendors because there weren't as many people around on Friday night. And so I had a really, some really lovely conversations with some of the dyers um, that I had never met before. One of which was Crux Fibers, who's a lovely lady from um, the Northwest Territories. And um, there was also some dyers from Brian Colorworks who were a new to me dyer. Um, it, it was just a great time to wander around see uh, the very many vendors that were um, selling on Friday night and to, to have some conversations with people that was really exciting. Um, and then on Friday night, there was a fashion show. Um, the fashion show came in two parts. I only was there for the first part of the fashion show, but there was some really, really interesting um, makers involved in the, in the fashion show. There was, I feel, um, more crochet in, in the um, designers that I saw, the knitting. And so that was exciting for me because I'm not as familiar with crochet as I am with knitwear. So there was some um, really lovely knitwear. There was some uh, really interesting crochet, um, both clothing and accessories. And so I'm going to in, now insert uh, a few clips of some of the um, fashion show from Friday night at the Gathering Threads Festival.
Saturday, the marketplace opened up for everyone and it was open from 10 till 4 so you could visit all of the vendors throughout the day there were different um, artists demonstrations going on there were some talks going on on the main stage there was a lovely social lounge where people were just stopping to enjoy um, drinks or food and uh, just knit with other people um, there was also a family zone where kids could um, try different crafting. I know they were doing some needle felting um, and some different trying out different crafts for kids. So that was exciting. That was in another corner. Uh, and it was just a really, really lovely kind of relaxed vibe. So on, on Saturday afternoon, I had a demonstration on my circular sock machine. Um, I was a little hesitant about this, I think partly because I was just sort of showing uh, what I had done. I didn't really, I wasn't selling anything. I wasn't marketing. Um, but it was a great time to meet people and just talk about knitting, um, trying out a circular sock machine, um, and just, um, chatting. It was really, it was a really great, uh, time for me. I, uh, had the opportunity to meet some of you. So thank you so much for stopping by. And I did have a chance to crank out a sock tube, which I'll show you. I'm back. Um, yeah, I, I started out demonstrating the sock tube and then I had a bit of a lull so I put some actual sock yarn on there and I managed to just uh, crank out a quick tube. <laughs> this is some Knit Picks. Uh, well, this is their um, Felici sock yarn in Goth Kitty. So I just cranked out a 50 gram tube and this will make a lovely pair of socks for someone, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, but it was great to to have some time to actually crank out a tube and to chat with some people. And um, I think some of you might actually be making your own 3D sock machine or at least um, be a step closer to getting it to work for yourself. So that's great. Um, I know some of you uh, in the Edmonton area uh, were having uh, a tough time. There is definitely a learning curve with circular sock machines. So if you are in the Edmonton area and you're trying to get your machine to work, um, give me a call. Let's meet up and we'll, uh, we'll play with your machines and make some sock tubes. And so that was Saturday. And then Sunday, I was too tired <laughs> to, to attend. It had been a long weekend. There was Euler games um, and soccer games and volleyball end of the year recap. So um, life got in the way, but Sunday was another day that was open uh, in the marketplace, um, shorter hours, I think. And they were uh, featuring a lovely talk by some dyers about different dyeing techniques. So there was a lot of things going on at the Gathering Threads Festival. Not only was there um, the marketplace, there was many classes going on on Saturday and Sunday, and then talks throughout the day and then social activities. So it was a really, really fun festival. This is the first time um, for the festival to show itself or to present itself in this current iteration. And I think they did a really good job. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this festival grows over time, but it was really great to meet so many new to me vendors. There were certainly dyers there that I was familiar with and had seen at other events, but it was really great to see new people uh, and also new um, crafts being welcomed in. Often these fiber festivals seem to be really focused on knitting, but it was really great to see so much crochet going on, so much crochet um, shown, like um, samples of crochet, because it's not something that I have seen as much. So that was really, really nice to see. There was also some embroidery, uh, some pottery, just a lot of different um, vendors. So that was really great to see. In terms of the demonstrators, there were some people doing some wet felting, there was weavers, um, there was a lady who was making um, mats for people who were experiencing homelessness and she makes them out of used um, shopping bags. So plastic shopping bags that you may have lying around. She takes them and crochets them into mats for people to either sleep on or cover themselves with. And um, that was really great to see. It was great to see um, such a great example of um, recycling. Uh, and also social consciousness. So so creating something with your craft that can be used by people who can really need it. Uh, the other um, sort of demonstration or um, group that was there was a group called Craft for Yeg. Yeg um, is the name 
or the short for term for um, the Edmonton International Airport. So sometimes you'll see um, groups around Edmonton referred to as in YEG, because um, Y-E-G is what we call the Edmonton International Airport. So um, Craft for YEG was there and they are a group who craft for a number of different charities. I think the last I heard they had seven different charities that they craft for and they will take anything and everything. So they craft for um, neonates and newborns in the hospitals. They craft for uh, women's charities. They craft for um, kids in schools. So um, certain schools where kids maybe um, don't have things like hats and toques to keep warm in the winter. So they'll craft for those schools. So the schools can give out uh, warm winter clothing for kids who don't have. Um, there are crafts for um, pets. So for some of the um, the animal shelters or uh, where, where um, animals are um, looked after before they can be rehomed. So things like um, small blankets for those um, animals or toys. And then there's also a group um, that they, they knit for our um, seniors um, or people experiencing dementia or Alzheimer's and they will make fidget toys to keep their hands busy and they're um, made out of yarn or fabric so they are soft um, and pliable for their hands but also not harmful if they uh, drop them or if they throw them. Uh, so I was really really impressed by this group and uh, I came home and I joined them on Facebook and uh, if you're interested, I will um, pop a link down below also. It's a group called Craft for Yeg. They have patterns for things um, on the net, on their web page. So if it's something that you're not familiar with, you could um, look up a pattern for that. I think I will be looking up one of their fidgets because um, that's something I'm interested in trying out. And I know it's crocheted. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just I'm really looking forward to um, participating in that. In that with that group I have often yarn left over um, you know when you make a sweater or if you make a pair of mittens or if you make a hat there's always yarn left over and I don't like um, necessarily having that yarn around and I don't always have a purpose for it but small amounts of yarn can be used to make things like children's hats or children's mittens and so my plan is to use up my scraps of yarn I certainly have some I'm looking at you, yarn cupboard. Um, I certainly have some lying around and I have some patterns that I've been wanting to try to make and I just haven't. So some of those are some tin can knit patterns. One of them is the antler hat. Um, they have a pair of mittens called the World Simplest Mittens, which I believe can be knit in a variety of yarn weights. So I'm looking forward to using up my scrap yarns um, for Craft for Yig. The great thing is they do um, collections uh, four times a year so they'll either come to you and pick up your yarn or you can drop them off at a uh, senior center in here in Edmonton, which actually is not too terribly far from me. Um, but I'm like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting involved with this group. And I'm so glad to learn about them through the Gathering Threads Festival. So I'm going to take a few minutes to show you um, some of the things I got at the Gathering Threads Festival. If you're not interested, I totally understand. I will see you next time. But if you want to see some of the yarns that I picked up and was interested in, we're going to do that right now. Um, this is the other bag that I got from the Furls booth as part of the VIP, um, the VIP pass. It says, because every body deserves beautiful crochet. And these bags are really great. They're a really lovely size and they have a button closure like that and I'm always using bags like this uh, when we go to various sporting events or just to carry things around in shopping bags etc so they're really great so I'm just gonna go from the top from the top to the bottom so one of the first places I stopped was 910 publications they are a um, pub publisher of craft related um, books and pamphlets so I picked up this sock mending guide this does Swiss, Scottish, and stocking darning. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't really, I don't really mend a lot of my socks. I should, but I don't because I'm always making more socks. But 
this is a useful skill and something that I think I would like to learn more about. So I picked up this lovely little pamphlet. It's by Holly Yo, who is um, a Canadian designer and uh, knitwear teacher. And so there are some really lovely um, pictures on how to mend your own knitting in various ways. So that's really cool. And actually, I am looking forward to um, giving this a better look and also maybe giving some of these techniques a try. So there's a variety of different ways to do it. Um, and so that's a little pamphlet that I picked up. And then I picked up this book, which I've been looking forward to for quite some time. It's by Anna Hunter. Anna Hunter is the um, shepherdess and owner operator of Longway Homestead, which is um, a yarn mill in Manitoba. And she wrote this beautiful book called Sheep, Shepherd and Land, Stories of Sheep Farmers Reinvigorating Canadian Wool. So I'm really interested to read this book. I've met Anna on a number of occasions and she's really, really an interesting and passionate woman who has um, really become a spokesperson for the Canadian wool industry. And so she talks about various uh, wool um, so sources in Canada. So uh, across Canada, which is a very large country. <laughs> um, and in every province, she talks about some of the different um, the different sheep that are grown here and the types of wool and how the wool industry has changed over time here in Canada. So I'm looking forward to spending some time with Anna and this book, which is beautiful. Okay, so those are my books. Um, I stopped by Brian Dye Works. Brian Dye Works it was a new to me dyer and uh, I had been looking at her yarns and then the one day she was wearing um, a Saturday shrug, which I will pop the link or a picture of right here. The Saturday shrug is a series of, sh is one of a series of shrugs. Um, these shrugs are free patterns uh, and there is the Friday shrug, the Saturday shrug and the Sunday shrug. And I have been meaning to knit one up um, but one of the owners of Brian Dyebricks was wearing one. Hers was two color and she had mentioned to me that she was able to knit this out of her bulky weight wool uh, and she used one and a bit of another skein of yarn. So she said you could probably knit one in, th in three skeins. So I took that as a challenge <laughs> and I picked up these three colors. This is a bulky um, yarn. It's called Fin Bulky, 100% untreated fin wool, soft spun three ply. It is um, sourced from an Alberta mill or a Alberta farm, Frostad Farms in Alberta. This is the wine color. This one is un this one is undyed, and this one is called Golden Chai. And I think this will make a really beautiful shrug for fall. So I'm looking forward to casting this on maybe in August. Um, or September as the days start to get a little bit cooler in the evening. So that's Brine Dye Works. I also picked up, oh, I picked up um, a small skein of some self-striping yarn. And again, I'm so appreciative when dyers make a 50 gram skein because that's perfect for me. And I actually mentioned that to the dyer and she was totally on board. She had lots of 50 gram skeins actually. So this is, um, called Artistic. It is self-striping merino yarn, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 50 grams. Um, and this is Comfy Cozy Knits. I've used Comfy Cozy Knits in the past and really enjoyed um, her colors, but also her, her dye techniques. So this is Artistic. Again, a nice little self-striping skinny yarn. And then on the Friday evening, when I first got to the festival, I was having a look at the, um, Crux Fibers booth and I was wearing this tank top and the dyer said, oh, um, is that silk linen? I said, yes, this is from Magpie Fibers. And she said, we have the same base that we're dying on. And so I had to pick up a couple skeins of that. This is 65% silk, 35% nylon, same base, love it. Uh, this is called Aqua and it is hand dyed in white horse in, sorry, the Yukon Territories. I think I said the Northwest Territories earlier, but she's from Yukon Territories. That was my mistake. So this beautiful aqua color, uh, I got two skeins, which should be plenty to make a summertime top. Do I know which summertime top at this time? I do not. Um, 
I had so, I made this um, June tank top and I had so much yarn left over that I was able to make um, a Sophie scarf and still have some left over. So I'm confident I could make a t-shirt out of this. So I do have some ideas brewing in the back of my mind and I'll let you know how that goes. But yes, this is Crux Dye Work. Um, again, out of White Horse in the Yukon. And then the last thing that I picked up uh, was a couple of little embroidery hoops. Because you know, every once in a while, I get the urge to embroider or cross stitch. And I find that it can be difficult to find nice crochet, or not crochet, embroidery hoops. These ones are very smooth and lovely hoops. Um, they're well made and um, I am looking forward to doing a little more stitching. Uh, I don't know what, I don't have any plans at the moment to be doing any more stitching, but you never know. And I thought it would be useful just to have a couple of six inch hoops on hand. This is a uh, size that I have used several times. In fact, it's probably the size I use the most on my little uh, mural of cross stitch. And so, um, I have these on hand for when the urge to stitch arises. And that is all of the purchases I made at the Gathering Threads Festival. I had a really lovely time. Um, I think partly because it was a chance to unwind and relax with other makers. Uh, it was a chance to meet dyers and crafters, and it was a chance to meet some of you. So I had a really, really lovely time, and thank you again so to so many of you who stopped by and said hello. That is all I have to share with you for the time being. I hope in the next couple of weeks you find time to uh, make all the summertime tank tops or crochet all the granny squares or do whatever it is that makes you happy. I know in the next couple of weeks, I plan on knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.